Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about uh, CJC 1295 and Ipamorlin or GHRP 205, the combination of the two. Let's do a little bit of basic science explanation. What's the aging process driven by? In the simplest terms, you have mitochondria that have to talk to your nucleus. Now, mitochondria only have a couple dozen genes of their own. They have to get most of the mundane routine genes from the cell nucleus. And the ones they've retained are the ones that they need right away so that they can respond very quickly to the needs of the moment. And mitochondria then duplicate themselves so we can trace our lineage through our mothers because it is only an egg that carries mitochondria. Your male sperm doesn't have any, so you get all your mitochondria from your mother. Okay, but mitochondria also decide when you die. When they start going through cell death, that's when you give up the ghost. Now, here's the tricky part. You have a conversation between the mitochondria and your nucleus, and effectively what you want is you want stem cells throughout your body and every organ in your body that are like military on parade, but they're at ease. They're in a quiescent state, but they've got their uniform on and they're all ready to go if they get called up. You want stem cells that have mitochondria that have a vibrant conversation with their nucleus. So if you need them, they are responsive. Now, what ends up happening is our mitochondria start getting damaged as the years go by and they start losing some of their efficiency. Now that damage could come in the form of having gotten affected by mold toxins or Lyme disease, or they could be eating an unending diet of sugar and too much fat and protein. There could be a lot of things that have damaged your mitochondria, but those mitochondria, they start becoming senescent and the cell starts getting into a spiral of gradually increasing inability to make energy and down the tubes you go. So keeping that conversation between mitochondria, you don't want senescent cells, you want quiescent cells. You want to nudge them back from early senescence. You can't take enough antioxidants to wake that back up again. We've tried the antioxidant route, it doesn't work. So what you want is to stimulate the process of creating an active conversation between your nucleus and your mitochondria. Three things do that. One of them is really aggressive exercise, or actually any exercise. Walking two miles a day is so powerful that men over 60, the Honolulu Retired Men's Study showed that people, men who walk two miles a day have half the mortality of folks who don't. Half is a good number when you're over 60. So exercise will do it. And exercise is basically pushing your cells to the point of some exhaustion so the mitochondria can say to the nucleus, we don't have enough energy here. You need to put out some growth factor. We need to start talking back and forth so you can wake things up. Okay, exercise is number one. Number two, is the fast mimicking diet or fasting. Again, you are depriving the cell of energy. You're going through fasting and putting healthy cells through a little bit of a stress test. That's intentional. And after that stress test, they respond by saying, oh dear, let's clean up all the old dead mitochondria, but let's turn on the good ones. Let's wake back up again and get going again. So the fast mimicking diet, for example, 800 calories for five days. That's something I do every month. Join me. Last week of the month, I'm spending five days eating a vegan diet, 8% protein, very low, and 50% fat, but all vegetable. What's the third thing? Growth hormone. And that's where the formula of CJC 1295 and GHRP 
works. And what those two things do is they stimulate the production of growth hormone and suppress the inhibition of its activity onto the various receptor sites that are caused by other peptides. So when you think of the whole formulas, you're turning on growth hormone. What are the benefits of growth hormone, of making it on your own? Your pituitary has the massive capacity, but the, som the somatostatin, which inhibits it, as we age, gradually rises and inhibits your manufacture of growth hormone. And so bit by bit, you make less and less and less. If you can stimulate it, both at the ne normal growth hormone receptor and at the ghrelin receptor, you will have, well, for the first week, you'll feel better sleep. The second week, you might notice you've lost a pound or two. By the third week, you might notice your muscles are a little bit stronger. You're just feeling much more alert. Somewhere along the line, you might start feeling a little sexier. All of those things are good things. We want all of those things. How much should you take? Well, it turns out that actually CJC1295 is so potent, you better not take it every day. You probably should only take it five days a week and then take two days off, just before bedtime. Intriguing, isn't it? This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about CJC1295 and Ipmorlin growth hormone producers.